If you study in the Fenner School, you'll be exposed to a really, really broad range of issues in environmental science. Probably almost anything you can think about around climate and water and resource management. Uh, but we try and do this not just looking at the problems uh, as sort of physical problems, but we know that these problems there are people problems. So we bring social perspectives as well as a sort of a biology or ecology perspective to these kinds of problems. So the, the Fenner School uh, is a school in the College of Science, but unlike many of the other schools in the College of Science, we don't focus just on one discipline. So uh, the School of Biology focuses on biology, chemistry focuses on chemistry and so on. In the Fenner School, rather than focusing on a discipline, we focus on a problem area. So we're interested in problems related to the environment, so problem solving in the environment, but we bring to that lots of different disciplinary perspectives. So it includes biology, chemistry, physics, all those kinds of disciplines, but it also includes social sciences because problems, uh, environment issues are never just physical world issues, they're people issues. Uh, and so it's that, the, the, the creativity you get from bringing a people perspective and a physical perspective together to solve problems is what makes it so exciting. There are lots of different kinds of people that decide to study in the Fenner School. It's a really, really diverse community of people. And I guess the thing that unites them is they've decided that they, uh, they care about environment issues and they can see that, that some training to understand environment issues and problem solving is going to help them uh, later in their lives. So that's the thing that brings people together. But within that, you therefore have some students that might be very, very sciencey or very, very strong on um, the sort of more mathematical side, sitting alongside people that might not even be that comfortable with mathematical thinking that come a bit more from, from an arts perspective. Uh, and we really enjoy having that diversity of students in our classes and we really try to accommodate that range of backgrounds that students might bring because we think that's where problem solving is really going to come from. I have the, the great uh, fun and privilege of taking uh, the first course that most first year students take uh, in the Fenner School, a course called Environment and Society, and we have a great time exploring some of the biggest issues facing society today. So we really ask the question about why if we know uh, the answers to many of the environmental problems afflicting society, uh, problems like climate change and uh, scarcity of water and uh, the extinction of species, why isn't society fixing them? Uh, and so we really get into uh, questions of how people think about the environment uh, and, and how people and governments make decisions. Then, uh, what are some of the ways that better decisions can be taken? Some of our students do the most uh, amazing field work. Uh, so at the Fenner School, uh, in your undergraduate degree, you can undertake uh, individual research projects with academics, uh, engaging with uh, external organisations to address real world problems. Field trips, are, they're just so important because it's such a visceral experience. You can read all of the papers you want and you learn really interesting things. But when you're walking down the street and you're, or you're in the field and you're smelling things and you're seeing things with your own eyes and you're experiencing it, um, it's just a completely different type of learning. And your understanding of what's going on is so much more um, vibrant and alive. One of the um, special things about the Vietnam Field School is although the students do a whole variety of different research skills, uh, we focus on qualitative research. Um, so students really get out there and just get to talk to people to um, understand their lives and understand their businesses and understand um, why they do what they do. And those skills are so important for helping students to understand the world around them and understand why people behave like they do and how we can learn from that to solve environmental problems. The course that I teach, it's relatively light on on lectures. What we really focus on and have a strong emphasis on is in-person skill development and getting outside. So in Canberra here, we're lucky. We're very close to a range of conservation programs. We go out to Timbinbilla and look at the captive breeding program for a range of threatened species. 
We team up with researchers and managers from the ACT government, from the conservation branch there. We go out and look at threatened grasslands and the species that look in them. And we give students first-hand experience to go out and to survey for wildlife, to learn some of those skills, to learn the considerations in developing those types of surveys, and also meet the people who are working in this space. So we here in the Fenner School that we provide a high um, uh, field experience buried in a, quite a number of our courses. So on average, about 40% of our courses will have some sort of field work associated with it. Now that field work is not just that traditional lens of digging a hole, measuring a tree, counting leaves or counting um, insects. It also goes to walking into the, going into a landscape where we can talk to the real people that manage that landscape. We can understand the challenges of those people in trying to manage that environmental condition. You don't have to end up with sort of an environment job because you have an environment degree. Graduates from the Fenner School work in all sorts of different places. Some of them work in the places you might think are kind of obviously about environment. So working for um, those government agencies that play a role in resource management or in private companies that are, that are involved in resource management, like, like um, companies that manage forests or, or agriculture. But environment is such a part of, uh, of our lives and a part of the economy nowadays that you can use the skills that you get from a Fenner, uh, the Fenner School training in more diverse jobs than that. So people working in, um, in the finance sector, people working in business, people working in big business and small business, but bringing a sustainability perspective to those roles. So, uh, uh, and, and we have graduates in all those places. As a school that's interested in problem solving, the, the, your lecturers that you'll come across, of course, have expertise in their, in their particular area, like any academic, um, has because we're interested in problem solving they also have connections into uh, into those organizations uh, farming organizations water management organizations uh, government organizations that that uh, make policy decisions or regulate environment issues so and we really try to connect students with that that outside of the university world so the kind of uh, understanding theory matters but we really try to go outside of theory and look at practice and what that looks like in in the real world uh, which of course is um, is the world which we hope some of you will go and work in and, and apply the skills you learn in the school so if you get into a study environmental science uh, you have a, a lot of uh, different options uh, from a career perspective because it's very diverse but if you are passionate about the environment and you want to solve uh, big environmental problems uh, this is the way to be in my research, I use uh, remote sensing data coming from uh, different platforms, from satellites, uh, drones, uh, aircrafts, and many different platforms to monitor the environment. More specifically, I focus uh, my research on bushfire management. So I provide uh, useful information, mainly provided uh, via maps. Uh, that helps uh, the fire managers to make decisions on, on the day-to-day -day activities. So when I study environmental sciences, I learned so many things that were so interesting that I was not sure what I wanted to do with my career. So what I did was just to try out different things. So I was managing the waste of a hospital. I was analyzing the, the honey from the macrobiological point of view. Uh, in a laboratory and then I ended up doing some field work um, in a national park collecting samples uh, to validate uh, observations from satellites and I decided that I was, that was what I was passionate about and I, I decided to follow a career on that direction. Almost all jobs these days uh, have some interaction with the environment. The graduates from our degrees uh, serve in the most amazing array of professions and are doing the most fantastic things for society. Uh, I see a lot of students coming out of our degrees and going into the government's graduate programs uh, and very quickly getting promoted uh, into uh, management responsibilities uh, in areas ranging from water to wetlands to agriculture uh, to threatened species conservation. 
So my research focus is pretty multifaceted actually. So it ranges from work on crabberry frogs, for example, in the Magi National Park locally, trying to improve their conservation outcomes and understand their threats, right up to the global scale. I'm interested in why different species are more vulnerable to extinction and what we can do to try to prevent the extinctions of species right up at that global scale. So yeah, the work day is really varied. It, moves from being in the field so I might be in the field for a few days at a time up to a few weeks and so that's hands-on collecting data surveying that sort of thing but then I also spend quite a lot of time in my office as so many of us do analyzing data writing and in in meetings of course so the work with corroboree frogs has been closely developed over the last decade with the ACT government and we work with different branches of the government. So that's really fun because we're working with people who are approaching the problem from a very applied perspective. And so what I'm often trying to do as a scientist is understand where there's a knowledge short for, how we might not understand a particular threat to the species or how a species might respond to a particular management regime and then designing, in this case, with the species like the crabberry frogs, an adaptive management experiment where we're going out there and we're trialing things in a really rigorous way to gain new information that can be used to improve our conservation. So um, uh, my research uh, was about the implementation of legality and sustainability verification system in Indonesian wood value change. I assure you that there are a lot of plenty of career uh, in, in uh, ahead of you. So I, I, I've been working in the government as well, back home in Indonesia, and now I'm working in academia. And there are a lot of plenty of career uh, opportunity for environmental and sustainability. Uh, for example, in industry uh, and also in NGO. Uh, and even in international organizations such as IUFRO or uh, UNDP or UNEP or even the World Bank, they, uh, all of the company will look at the environmental scientists because now, nowadays people will talk about how you can success business in also balancing with environmental value and how you can address the climate change. So many as, uh, uh, institution would look at or will look for you as an environmental uh, scientist. So if you want to study environmental science, um, here in the Fenner School, we offer our own named degree. So it's a specialist environmental degree called Bachelor of Environment and Sustainability. That degree will allow you to explore the interactions between human and uh, physical science. We will, uh, within the degree, you study biophysical programs such as water science, biodiversity, climate, right through to the social dimensions of environment society interaction. Things like environmental policy or environmental economics, um, uh, society and environment. The interaction between all of society is an incredibly important to understand to be able to solve complex problems. So the degree is built in a way that it makes sure that you can uh, learn from this diversity uh, of knowledge bases. You can also um, do a Bachelor of Science and then pick up one of the majors that we offer within the Fenner School. You know, when a major is a collection of eight courses and these eight courses relate to a theme. It could be a biodiversity theme, it could be a sustainability theme, or it could even be something like water um, or policy theme. So that just gives you a little bit of flexibility. You could be doing a, a Bachelor of Science, picking up another science type major and then combine it with your environmental lens as well. You could be doing double degrees. So quite often we have a lot of students doing um, a degree in law, uh, arts, and then they come over and they do an environmental degree that taps or, or attaches to that double degree. You know, that then gives uh, a graduates that added knowledge and really importantly, it gives, it builds graduates with skills that can start to blend that discipline knowledge between the different degrees as well. There's also the capacity to do a Bachelor of Arts in a major of environmental studies, you know, and so in that way, we can have students that might be doing a human orientated or human centric major degree, 
and then come over and value add that degree with the environmental lens. You know, quite often that could include the environmental lens of the human aspect of environmental um, science, or you might want to value add some of that already existing uh, human centric lenses with something like the hard sciences. So put in some climate science or some water science because there's direct relevance. So there's multiple. And then the third, the final way you can also do it is pick up some electives. So quite often, you know, students will choose one of our environmental science courses that then just adds to their elective pool. So to recap, you know, there's really four ways that you can get a, you can acquire environmental science knowledge. You can come and do our home degree and spend three years in the Bachelor of Environment and Sustainability. And you will walk away with a good understanding of biophysical sciences through to social sciences. You can do a Bachelor of Science and add in one of our environmental uh, majors or some of our environmental minors. You can do a Bachelor of Arts and do a uh, major in environmental studies, or you can start to pick up some of our environmental science courses as electives that fit into other degrees. So when we build um, the environment or the Bensu or the Bachelor of Environment Sustainability degree, we've built it in a way that it is building knowledge as you move out in your years. And, and that knowledge aligns with the research strengths of the university or of this school as well. So at our first year level, you know, we've got some core courses, those foundational courses that build um, knowledge in the social sciences, in the um, applied statistics through to biophysical sciences. And then that is the logical flow on to this broader network of second year offerings that start to build um, more foundational knowledge in discipline or sub-disciplines. So if we move over into the social sciences we, or into the more uh, societal based science, uh, courses, we can start to build understanding of um, human ecology. We can start to think about environmental policy. We can start to think about in uh, indigenous land management right through to the biophysical sciences such as water science biodiversity science um, climate sciences and then that moves into the more capstone more uh, finer detailed knowledge in the third year courses where we're we're starting to value add and expect students to draw their knowledge across the disciplines Things like climate science, climate change science and policy, you know, that tight intersection between the human and the biophysical sciences starting to come together. The international environmental policy, putting our understanding into a global concept. You know, where does our management and our global position start to flow in? So the, the courses within the degree are built in a way that uh, and building knowledge and building your depth of understanding. So as we're moving, as we're increasing our knowledge through the years, first, second and third year, and we're expanding the depth of understanding and the cross interactions between the different um, discipline knowledges, our understanding our global context, we're also building those practical skills. We have field trips that are engaging real world practitioners that are managing those complex environmental, societal environmental conditions. So talking through them, talking with them to understand those challenges is a field trip and is so enriching in, in that learning space. Just like in our biophysical story of trying to understand how trees grow, what are the constraints to insect reproduction why are we getting dieback in, in the alpine regions? It's about understanding those biophysical properties. It's about understanding how to measure, how to collect, how to st statistically analyze. They're both important and they're both skills that we try to develop within the curriculum. We can go beyond three year degree and you can start to value add in terms of um, honors or even a master's level. So here at the ANU, you can start to um, enroll in a four-year degree. So that's a course which is your base three-year degree with your honours 
on top. Uh, or you can also look at what we call a vertical double. It's where you have your undergraduate degree and in your third year you start to blend some of the master's levels and then you exit with an, an undergraduate and a master's degree as well. We offer, um, we provide a, an honours cohort uh, experience here where we build um, those practical professional research skills within our honours cohort and also our master's cohort because we value uh, our research development not only just as pure research but also that applied research. It's about researchers moving into government agencies, um, about researchers moving into corporate um, entities, as commercial entities as well, as well as research institutions. So there's a breadth of um, employment opportunities for our masters and our honours graduates as well. So we're trying to build those professional skills to make sure that they're well-rounded. The ANU is a really great university to study at, so I'm, I really encourage students to make that choice, and even more so, uh, I encourage students to look at the Fenner School of Environment and Society. We've got a bunch of great courses. We've got a degree that some of you will, will want to do. Uh, and it's, it'll be a great experience for you.